Today, we're going to be talking about some of the greatest faces that have ever graced the game of football. The legends on the sideline who absolutely revolutionized the way that offenses are ran as we know them today. You know, they say that the NFL is a copycat league, but as anyone who struggled in school knows, that only works when you have someone pretty smart to copy. Luckily for today's coaches, there have been some brilliant minds who've designed offensive schemes and systems that were so innovative that they changed the NFL forever. So today, let's take a look at the 10 most influential offensive coaches to ever grace an NFL sideline. You're starting with an old timer, who is one of the first revolutionary coaches responsible for shaping the game of football, Sid Gilman. If this name sounds unfamiliar, that's probably because Gilman's career in football started way back in 1936, when he played one year pro ball for the Cleveland Rams. Shortly after, he pivoted to coaching, first as a college coach. He spent 21 years in the collegiate ranks, bouncing around as an assistant for a few different schools, and as the head coach in Miami of Ohio and Cincinnati. In 1955, he left the college game in Cincinnati to coach the Los Angeles Rams in the City of Angels. After five years in LA, he jumped over to the Chargers in the AFL where his intense professionalism was a game changer. Sid Gilman brought class to the AFL, Raiders owner Al Davis, who worked with Gilman on those Chargers teams once said. Being part of Sid's organization was like going to a laboratory for the highly developed science of professional football. Now it wasn't just the class that Davis picked up on, but Gilman's infatuation with the passing game, particularly in the ways he used it to stretch out the field. Gilman is often referred to as the father of the modern passing game because of the innovative offensive concepts that he introduced. It sounds basic, but he was one of the first champions of timing, regularly preaching the importance of repetitions between the quarterbacks and receivers so that they were as in sync as possible on their routes. He was also really the first guy to introduce progressions within a play. Basically, Gilman took passing from coaches and quarterbacks telling their receivers to get open to the highly coordinated systematic attack that we now see today. Davis wasn't the only key figure in NFL history that Gilman coached either. He was also a key influence for men like Dick Vermeil, George Allen, Chuck Knoll, and Don Coryell. In fact, speaking of Al Davis and Don Coryell, these two pupils of Gilman also made our list, and for good reason. And starting with the former, before Davis was known for his renegade antics as the owner of the Raiders, he was actually one of the few coaches of his generation responsible for pushing the game forward, particularly when it came to passing the ball. He iterated on Gilman's vertical pass offense, and his teams aired the ball out in a way that very few before them ever had. So for any of our younger fans who might remember Davis's infatuation with fast receivers during his later years as the owner of the Raiders, well, that all stemmed from the offense he used to run back in his coaching days. Davis is also credited for being a huge influence on Bill Walsh, another extremely impactful NFL coach, but we'll get on him later. Moving on to the aforementioned Don Coryell, his legendary career as an NFL head coach spanned 14 seasons, during which he notched 111 wins, making him the first coach to get 100 plus wins both in the college and professional ranks. It was in the collegiate game that Coriel first started to develop his reputation for being an offensive genius. While at San Diego State, he completely changed the way that the Aztecs played, and the brand of football was so exciting that the average attendance more than quadrupled during his tenure there. During their undefeated season in 1969, the Aztecs led the NCAA in total offense, putting up 532.2 yards per game and scoring 46 points two points per game. The principles of the offense were simple in theory, but implemented in a number of interesting ways. Coriel once explained the underlying thinking as such, I just decided, hell, you can't just go out and run the ball against a better team. You gotta mix it up, you gotta throw the damn ball if you're gonna beat better teams. Because he wasn't always getting the top tier recruits at San Diego State, Coriel was forced to innovate a lot, and is credited with a number of concepts that are still seen in the game today, like the flood route combination, option routes, pre-snap motion, and even running back screens. And when he got his chance in the NFL, he brought much of the same offensive genius to the table. Coriel's offensive systems were so groundbreaking that it not only changed how other teams had to defend them, but also completely altered defensive personnel. As defenses were forced to prioritize speed and coverage and subsequently played far more nickel and dime than they ever had before. Coriel's offensive genius made his Chargers teams one of the most exciting teams that the league had ever seen. I mean, just check out Dan Fouts numbers before and after Coriel took the helm. He went from five straight seasons to start his career in which he never eclipsed the 500 mark and threw 
threw far more interceptions and touchdowns to six straight winning seasons. Fouts led the league in passing four consecutive years and passing touchdowns two consecutive years during this stretch. Coriel literally turned Dan Fouts from a fringe starter into a Hall of Famer. And the ripples of Coriel's legacy are not just evident in the schemes that we see nowadays, but it also has trickled down through his coaching tree, through guys like Joe Gibbs and John Madden, two Hall of Fame head coaches in the NFL. Joe Gibbs, to his credit, was one of the more innovative and game-changing coaches that the game has seen in his own right. Gibbs also started in the college ranks at San Diego State, and after a few more pit stops, he followed in his mentor, Coriel's footsteps, to the NFL, first as a running backs coach in St. Louis, then as the OC in Tampa Bay and San Diego, before finally earning head coaching duties in Washington in 1981. During his time in DC, he won three Super Bowls and captured Coach of the Year honors twice. Interestingly, while Gibbs was integral in developing Coriel's pass-heavy offense, he implemented a completely different run-centric offense in Washington known as the Counter Tray. This was a smash-mouth style of football built around controlling the line of scrimmage. Washington did well to build a fearsome offensive that was perfectly suited for their system, which was known as the Hogs. The offense revolutionized the ground game, leveraging one back to tight end formations, which was largely unheard of before those legendary Redskin teams, but nonetheless are still seen all over NFL fields to this day. While Gibbs' Washington teams were wrecking havoc in the NFC East, out west, Bill Walsh, who we touched briefly on before, was leading the other dominant NFC franchise of the era, the San Francisco 49ers, with a game-changing offensive system of his own, what is now referred to as the West Coast Offense. Walsh developed the system somewhat serendipitously during his time as an assistant coach under Paul Brown for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincy's quarterback, Virgil Carter, was very athletic for a quarterback, particularly at that time. But he lacked the arm strength to consistently throw the deep passes required in the vertical passing scheme that Walsh traditionally ran during his days with Al Davis. So, being the innovator that he was, Walsh experimented with a new concept to spread the field, stretching it horizontally and leveraging a series of quick, generally short short passes. Walsh is also believed to be one of the first coaches to meticulously script out the first 15 plays of a game, something that has become a common practice in the game today. And like many of these legendary coaches, Walsh also had quite a few disciples who went on to change the NFL with creative offensive systems of their own. Like Mike Holmgren. After a brief stint coaching in the college ranks, Holmgren got his start in the NFL as an assistant under Walsh and San Fran. The duo had an extremely successful partnership, posting a 71-23-1 regular season record during their five years together. Not to mention the two Lombardi trophies that they captured, one of which came in a record-setting 55-10 victory over the Denver Broncos. Holmgren parlayed his success with Walsh into the head coaching job in Green Bay in 1992, which is widely recognized as one of the most successful coaches coaching stints of all time. He worked exceptionally well with Brett Favre and helped turn him from a wild gunslinger into a three-time MVP and a Super Bowl champion. Favre thrived in Holmgren's system, which featured a nice balance of traditional West Coast principles to create space along with a deep passing attack to take the top off opposing defenses. Kind of like we've seen one of Holmgren's disciples, Andy Reid, do in recent years. Reid obviously has a generational talent in Patrick Mahomes under center, but many believe that the coach deserves far more credit for Mahomes' development and subsequently the Chiefs' recent successes than he gets. Reed has been one of the great innovators in the last 20 years and is always adding new wrinkles and concepts to his offense, most of which are successful and is soon imitated around the league. He has also been a huge proponent of empowering his assistant coaches and even his players with the freedom to put their own twist on things. For example, all pro tight end Travis Kelsey has the autonomy to mold the route that Reed's drawn up to attack the open spaces in the defense. And while Kelsey obviously deserves credit for his deep understanding of where these open spaces will be, this can only work within the guardrails of a cohesive offensive system. Otherwise, these kind of on-the-go adjustments can descend into chaos very quickly. Reed has also been a wizard and a trendsetter for finding new ways to get the ball into his playmaker's hands in open space. Next up, we have another famous NFL name, Mike Shanahan. 
Shanahan is renowned for the zone blocking schemes he used to power fearsome running attacks that were largely effective regardless of who was slotted at the running back position. Terrell Davis transformed into a 2,000 yard rusher damn near overnight because the system was so effective. And if this sounds familiar to our younger fans, that's because his son Kyle, now the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers, has quickly garnered a very similar reputation. Kyle uses many of the same offensive principles that his father did, of course with his own wrinkles and alterations. But Mike deserves a lot of credit for what we see happening in the NFL today. Not just in what his son is doing, but also Los Angeles Rams head coach Sean McVay, who despite still being one of the youngest coaches in the NFL, has already become insanely influential across the league. You see, McVay was on Shanahan's staff in Washington, and the success he's had ever since is pretty insane. Only is he the youngest head coach to win a Super Bowl, but McVay also has had five of his assistants hired as head coaches elsewhere. Jed Fish took a head job in the college game at the University of Arizona, and Matt LaFleur, Zach Taylor, Brandon Staley, and Kevin O'Connell have all landed highly coveted head coaching jobs in the NFL. People call it the Sean McVay effect, but we're now seeing young offensive-minded head coaches being hired all across the league, and the success that his disciples have had thus far is certainly a feather in both his and Mike's Shanahan's caps. McVay's motion-heavy offensive schemes are now spreading around the league like wildfire, and should be a huge part of football for years to come. And last but not least, we have the lone entry on this list who has yet to be a head coach in the NFL, though perhaps that will likely change someday soon. Greg Roman. Roman worked with Jim Harbaugh at Stanford, and followed him to the NFL when he took the head job in San Francisco in 2011, slotting in as the defensive-minded head coach's OC. It was there that Roman made his first mark on the NFL by creating an offensive system to fit their athletically gifted quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. It was in Roman's systems, which focused on designed runs, run pass options, and all sorts of movement, that Kaepernick ascended from a relatively unknown backup to the top of his position. It is no coincidence that Cap's struggles started shortly after Roman left town in 2014. Now, Roman is with the other Harbaugh brother in Baltimore, where he has been working with another explosively athletic quarterback in Lamar Jackson. Under Roman's tutelage, Lamar has become one of the most challenging QBs in the league to game plan for, and he's become a perennial MVP candidate. And with more and more dual threat quarterbacks popping up across the league, we're now seeing coaches everywhere pick and pull concepts from Roman's system. It'll be fascinating to see how both his and his imitators' offenses continue to develop in the coming years. But who do you think is the best offensive mind in the NFL today? Join us in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, click in the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.